Hi, and welcome to Design Your Dream Prom Dress Contest. The lucky winner gets to work with me designing their dream dress. All the contest rules will be available at the website www.asg.org as well as attitudecouture.com and designyourdreampromdress.com. This is the website for the contest. The URL is www.designyourdreampromdress.com. I'm so excited to introduce you with the American Sewing Guild to your dream prom contest. Together, in the next few months, all of us will work on our new ideas for prom. If you're like me and sick of the same old, same old dresses, now is your chance to rock the prom world. In case this is your first time visiting us at the webinar, this is me. I'm Robin Spint, and I own Attitude Couture and also work as the premier designer. I have been sewing since I was a little girl. I had to make all of my own clothes because I'm almost six feet tall, and when I was 13, I only weighed 99 pounds. So if I didn't sew, I couldn't find any clothes in the store. After art school, I became a successful jewelry designer. Even then, when I would go to my jewelry shows, I would wear interesting clothes that I had made. Unfortunately, after a car accident, I had to find something else to do. I went back to school and got a master's degree in business. After many years of being in school and teaching, I began an import business. This taught me how to work with sewing factories overseas and get my dresses made into samples. From that, I created Attitude Couture. As a lifelong sewing enthusiast, it's been my dream to be a clothing designer. My dream finally came true when I met a gentleman who was selling dresses that were manufactured in China. We started Crush, like I have a crush on you, by RJ Formals together five years ago. My former partner and I have since parted ways, but Attitude Couture lives on and is now providing me an opportunity to share my experience with other dreamers like you. Tonight's webinar is going to be about fashion research, fit, and the different silhouettes that we use to make dresses with. Fashion, style, trends, market research all go under the heading of fashion research. There are so many branches that you can follow in this field. The thing is that finding the right combination and creating a style which becomes a trend is about so many of these issues. It's the senses, it's timing, and of all, it's luck. In this webinar, we are going to look at some of the ideas and issues that I have learned over the years of working with store owners and listening to prom ladies just like you. However, you're much closer to prom and may have a very different vantage point. So I think we should put our heads together, which is why I want to listen to you and why your input is so important to me. Remember, this is a team project and we are teaching one another. There is a big difference between ready-to-wear sizing and formal dress sizing. That is why when you go into the store, your formal dress size is usually two sizes smaller than your normal dress size. It's not that you've gotten big or put on weight or there's anything wrong with you. The reason for the discrepancy is that most dresses you buy are manufactured overseas 
especially for evening wear, and the physical body types are much different in the Oriental culture than a typical American girl. For example, if you are very athletic, your shoulders and back width from side seat seam to side seam are definitely going to be larger than a girl who is not athletic. One of the ways I compensate for this is by incorporating lace-up backs on my dresses. That way, there is a much larger probability the dresses will fit more body types. So if you take a size 4, it can fit a size 2 because you can lace it up tighter, or it can fit a size 6. This is pretty important to think about when you're designing dresses. As an example, here are the size charts of Attitude Couture and one of my competitors. I suggest you look online at some of the ready-to-wear companies such as Ann Taylor, Banana Republic, or even Macy's. Do a Google search for that and you'll see there's a big difference in the sizes. If you look at this chart, you'll notice that Attitude Couture takes into consideration the fit of a more universal size and also in addition to the added one inch that you see as the plus in the discrepancy column, I have made sure that all of my dresses have about a one inch seam allowance to allow for alterations. In my previous experience, the seam allowances were only about a quarter of an inch, which is typical in most manufactured pieces, but there was no room to let a dress out. So when you put paper and pencil together to create your dress designs, some considerations on my part for a winning design will be, or another way to think about this is hint, hint, hint. Ease of alteration, design lines with regard to fit, things like invisible zippers on side seams, while pretty, are a nightmare to alter. Spend some time thinking about the construction of the dress and also how it will need to be altered. If a store owner has to remove sequins and appliques and beads in order to alter the dress, Typically, they'll pass the dress and try to sell an easier or more fitting dress. So you really need to consider where things go on the design of the dress. Now we're going to move on to silhouettes. The silhouettes are a very important way for you to begin the design process. I'm going to explain to you a variety of the silhouettes that I'm familiar with. Um, that we used um, in designing dresses, but I'm going to share with you the pros and cons of each silhouette and how you should think about your designs when you create your own dream, dream dress. In this picture, we have an A-line. An A-line is a great shape for many different body types. You notice that it's very tiny at the waist and it goes out into the letter A and that's why it's called an A-line. The reason that it's a great silhouette is it can hide some of our figure flaws. For example, if you are more Rubenesque, which means you carry more weight in your hips, the shape itself gently flows outward and will not point at any folds or rolls that may occur in that part of your body. A-lines with slits are very popular amongst the evening dress genre. Notice that in this dress, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Notice that in this dress, known as Rapture, I thought very carefully about this design. The slit, you will notice, sits just above the knee. Some slits are much too high, showing way too much information. Remember to design with dignity. More and more high schools are not allowing girls to show lots of flesh. 
in Attitude Couture, I want you to feel confident in your dress. I want you to raise your shoulders with a great amount of self-esteem, not display your indescribables. I, can, I call this design and this design notion design with a purpose. Think about self-esteem. The ball gown silhouette remains a fixture for some. Here is a place where I could use your guidance. How many of you would like to wear a ball gown? Notice that the dress sits comfortably at the waist and then flares out with many crinolines underneath to make the skirt very full. The design line can drop a few more inches and cover the stomach area. Get my plus size dresses on my website, you'll notice that any of the fuller dresses have something that goes over the stomach area to cover that up to make a plus size lady feel lots more confident. When you change the design line to a lower proportion, like the more full figured ladies I was just talking about, they like that. If you lower the design line to the knee, then you have what's considered a mermaid silhouette. This is your classic mermaid shape, and her name is Lita. Notice how she snugly hugs the body down to the knees. From there, she flares out in the full tulle skirt. This shape, like the ball gown, comes and goes. Though, for the last few years, mermaids are all the rage in bridal, prom, and evening. What do you think? Prom 2015, still a mermaid silhouette. The halter dress dates back to the 1940s. Probably the most iconic is the white halter dress Marilyn Monroe wore over the air vent when her hem flipped up. You can find this photo by Googling Marilyn Monroe. Notice Ava's jeweled neckline and how it wraps around her shoulders. This shape brings flattery to the figure in many ways. If the person is not very large busted, it gives them a more secure feeling as opposed to a strapless dress. By bringing attention to the neck and shoulders, it takes away from other areas of distress. Ava is a plus size dress as well. The model is a size 18, but she doesn't look that large because the lines work well to hide her figure flaws. Notice also that the bottom of the dress is a full skirt dress. This is known as a 360 degree circle skirt. These are very popular in formal wear. The wrap front dress was introduced in the early 1970s by Diane von Furstenberg. This style also comes and goes. Its main attribute is it flatters and makes a person look larger busted who isn't. However, a bear to alter. Plus, not typical of evening dresses. Although, maybe an opportunity for you to start a new trend. This sequin silly is an example of a strapless empire waist and an A-line with a slit. Wow, you can combine silhouettes? Thank goodness, otherwise dresses would be oh so predictable and oh so boring. A few years ago, a full sequin dress like this was to die for, but they seem to have fallen a bit out of favor. Do you agree? Do you think sequins are still the end-all and be-all. This one is headed for eBay. This is a simple sheath. It's hard to find examples of these as evening wear. Remember, a sheath doesn't have to be sleeveless like the one shown. I have been approached by various magazines looking for a sheath style dress. But if you go through my collection, I don't have any. Could this be a new trend? Should we be thinking about some evening dresses that are sheaths? What would that look like? Hmm, I wonder. A popular design feature is asymmetry. 
symmetry is when everything is balanced. Whatever is on one side is on the other side. If you look at your face, your face and your body are pretty symmetrical. But in design, often asymmetry helps to break up the symmetry of nature. When I first started working on Escapade, all the lace was balanced and actually only on one breast, calling attention to the lack of lace on the other. This is a big no-no in prom design. But as I worked with seamstresses in the factory, we resolved the problem by adding more lace. Now notice how it looks asymmetrical. It gives the dress a very lyrical and different personality. Doesn't she make you want to go out dancing right now? In Allegra, we have a very popular design trend known as color blocking. We see it more in ready-to-wear and not as much in evening clothes. However, a gal that needs to go to a military ball could fit right in with this red, white, and blue color block design. The embellishment of gold applique really sets it off. And yes, those are sparklers on her bodice. This next dress is a great example of a strapless dress. Her beautiful beaded bodice has these lovely jewels which hang off the dress looking like body jewelry. She is several years old. The reason I bring this to your attention is because prints come and go. Right now they seem to be gone, baby, gone. How do you feel about prints? I am showing you this dress as she will also be on eBay as this is what happens to designs that don't work. The first year I had this dress, it was a great dress. We sold more than a hundred of them. And the next year, we brought her back again. But prints were on their way out. And now, out-of-date styles get sent to eBay. Don't let your designs end up on eBay. In conclusion, tonight we have gone over sizing and silhouettes. As you can see, there is a lot of information here. I highly suggest you go back and rewind the webinar and look through this again several times because throughout the evening I've given you some really great hints about the kinds of designs that I'm looking for, which will help you to win the contest. So how do you begin to think about the design process and begin to draw a dress? Well, start with something you like. Think about a silhouette that looks good on you. Use that for inspiration. Or find a dress you like and think about the silhouette and why you like it. These are just some of the silhouettes we use in evening wear. I am really getting excited to see what you're thinking and what you're doing. And I'd really like to know if you have any questions. Are you embarrassed to ask them here? If so, that's okay. Send me an email at info at attitudecouture.com. Just put dress contest in the heading so I know why you're trying to get in touch with me. Okay now, does anybody have a question? Just type your question in the question box provided and I'll try and help you. Um, Margaret, you have your hand up. Can you type in the question box if you have a question, please? All right. Um, here's a question. What sewing level does one need to be at on most gowns? That's a very good question, Margaret. I'm so glad you asked me that. Um, so here's an interesting thing. Um, all the dresses that I've shown you, I haven't sewn one stitch on. Um, could I? Yeah. Uh, you know how many years it would take me to make one of these dresses? Um, 
you don't really need to know how to sew to be a designer, but the thing is it sure helps out a huge amount. I had someone helping me this last summer and he didn't know how to sew. And a lot of times he would bring me these drawings and he would get frustrated with me because they were pictures but I knew they were really hard to do because I know how to sew and he doesn't. To be involved in the contest you don't need to know how to sew but you need to know have a notion about it so that you can design appropriately. But I think everybody should know how to sew. It's really good for your soul. Anybody else have a question? Yes, there's another one. What is a good way to market clothing for a person that wants to start a business in fashion design? What is a good way to market clothing? Yes. Um, oh, gosh, that's a big question. Um, first, you have to figure out um, what, um, what your target market is. So what age level of people are you designing clothes for? Um, and then how do you go about marketing them? Oh, there's so many tools today that we didn't have in the old days. Um, you know, Facebook, getting a following, um, like I have a Facebook page. Um, I only have like 80 fans, so if all of you would be so kind as to like me on Facebook, I'd really like that. Um, you have to try and get your dresses in magazines that are appropriate to the age group that you're working on. Um, you have to have a marketing budget. But you know, the thing is, when I had that first slide um, and I said, you know, there's a lot of things that go into fashion trends, you know, figuring out uh, people's senses and what they like and really a great portion of this is luck. You know, if you make a design and 400 girls fall in love with it and they tell 400 other girls, then you have a hit dress. That's really the whole trick. And um, there's no magic potion for that and there's no secret to it. It's just, you know, a lot of luck and being in the right place at the right time. Um, look at somebody like Jonathan Kane. If you watch Project Runway, um, from him being on Project Runway, you know, his booth when I go to market is mobbed. And the reason is they know who he is. I mean, so there's many tricks to this trade. I hey, hope that helps a little bit. Here's another one. What's the best way to market dresses? Uh, or clothing in a location like Toronto, Ontario, where the weather is very cold? Um, I know that people still wear clothes up there. Um, and you're thinking about evening dresses. I suppose um, uh, the trick to that would be to design a dress with a jacket um, so that when they get to the affair that they're going to, whether it's a wedding or whatever, they have a wrap or something um, to put around them. I know um, that's a very big portion of the fashion industry. Um, you know, not everyone's 18 and fit and, you know, trim, and people prefer to wear jackets, so it's not out of the realm to figure out, like, some kind of lace cover-up that goes with the jacket, um, or um, a chiffon overlay, or a really interesting jacket that gets integrated into the design of the dress so that people who are going to these affairs can wear something and maybe it's see-through so they can see that it's strapless and sexy and all that kind of stuff, but that they're comfortable in a cold environment. Good question. Okay, here's another good question. How do you decide what the trend will be for 2015 prom? Oh, if I knew the answer to that, darling, I'd be a millionaire. <laughs> um, I have no idea. I mean, um, I hope that I set some of the trends, but, you know, if you go look at my line, I think I missed a bunch of the trends this year. Um, one of them, uh, now that I look at some of the other prom companies that have put their dresses up, a lot of them are uh, showing a lot of... Uh, uh, see-through kind of fabrics, 
um, where the dress is like you know to the knee and then the rest of the dress is see-through to the floor um, I think one of the worst things about um, trends in prom right now that I can tell you the worst trends are is that you know everybody's prom dresses look like everybody else's and that's really boring um, I think you know you girls as prom girls would know this better than I. I mean, what's the worst thing about going to prom is to show up at a prom and you both have the same dress on, right? So I think the more unique the design is and the more, you know, unusual it is, as long as it's comfortable to wear and, you know, like I said in the tutorial this evening, think about what you want to wear, you know, and what you like and what you think is trendy and you know, who who would think people are still wearing ball gowns yet, you know, in the Midwest, um, and this is no offense to anybody who's listening tonight in the Midwest, they can't have ball gowns, you know, big enough, yet on the East Coast and in California and the West Coast, a girl wouldn't be caught dead in a, a ball gown. So you have to think about, you know, the region that you're designing for, and then for me, I have to think about all of those regions. I can't just have one kind of silhouette. So that's a tough question. I wish I knew the answer to that. If you figure it out, will you let me know? <laughs> <laughs> okay, any other questions? All right, here's another one. For a person who wants to start off in a small fashion design business, would it be a good idea to market to local boutiques? Um, yeah, but I think the thing that you're going to encounter is you have to um, set your um, – you have to set your um, – expectations correctly. Um, most small boutiques um, don't have a lot of money and so if you make a dress let's say and it's really cute and you think it would really fit at the boutique, my first suggestion to you is to make one in the size you want to make it in. I would make it to fit myself if I were you and take it over to the boutique and ask them if they would just let you put it in there. Um, because generally they don't have a lot of money, they're not going to buy your dress line because you're unknown and all that kind of stuff. So as long as you can set your expectations to not make any money in the beginning and you're willing to make a few of them just to see if they'll sell, that, that's a way to try the market. Then if you get some bites and some success, then you can find someone to make your dresses for you and begin production and all that kind of stuff. But it's a good way to, to get your toe in the water, so to speak. All right, here's another good question. question. Does the design for the contest need to be in a certain format? I'm glad you asked that. Yes, um, those will be in the rules um, shortly uh, in the next couple of months. I'm going to do a uh, little film showing you how to draw the dresses on croquis and different things like that. And once we have that webinar, I'm going to put um, the croquis on the website. And so you'll be able to download those croquis and use them. Um, you'll need to draw a front view of the dress <clears throat> and a back view of the dress and uh, any like detail um, like lace or whatever can be on a second piece of paper and you should keep them to eight and a half by eleven sheets of paper so that you can scan them and make them into electronic documents and uh, that's something I'm going to discuss with you too because once you draw them in pencil you can't really see scanned images so when we go through that webinar I'm going to show you that you need to use markers uh, like Sharpies, but they have these special ones. I forget what they're called. Um, and you trace over your drawing with that, and then that way when you Xerox it or scan it, I can see it better. Um, but you can start practicing now. If you do a um, search on the Internet, you know, Google the word croqui. That's spelled C-R-O-Q-U-I-S, or fashion croqui. Um, there's millions of those on the internet that you can download for free in an 8.5 by 11 format. Look for a front and a back um, of a model pose 
and um, you can start practicing drawing on those or you can use your um, magic marker and trace over that one and so the lines are really dark and then draw on a clean piece of paper so you can't actually see the croquis. That's the technique I'm going to show you in that webinar. So that's a really good question. Did I answer that well enough for you or do you have more questions? I think that was good. Um, Linda, I see that your hand is up. Can you type in the question box? Um, can you spell croaky again and then pronounce it again? Yes, croaky is spelled C-R-O-Q, like queen, U-I-S. And when's the next webinar? Actually, I think that says this next slide. Do, uh, does anyone else have any questions? Nope, that was it. Okay, so we will break now till after the holidays. So to you and yours, have a happy Thanksgiving and a wonderful holiday season. Who knows, maybe Santa will bring you a sewing machine so you can turn some of your dreams into reality. I will be back with you on January 23rd where we will pick up and continue the design process. Happy holidays to all, and to all a good night. Thank you, Robin. You're and it, don't forget, if you have any questions for Robin uh, that you didn't get answered, if you think of them after this webinar, uh, you, can, you want to give them your email again, Robin? Yes, it's info, I-N-F-O, at attitude, that's A-T-T-I-T-U-D-E, couture, C-O-U-T-U-R-E dot com. So info at attitudecouture.com. And thanks so much for all your great questions tonight. You guys did a really good job. Thanks, Robin. And uh, this was recorded, so it will be up on the on the YouTube channel, and you can get to that through the ASG.org uh, homepage. Thank you. Good night.